What's up, YouTube? So, all right, so we got to talk. I got to talk to you. We got to have a confession. Okay, so I made a video. All right, let me let me put this down so I can talk to y'all, okay? Let me, let, let, let's talk about this, okay? So I made a video, and I said, hey, I'm not buying a Canon R5. I'm going to buy these things, and I did, and I showed you those things, but you know what, y'all? I'm a, I'm a liar, deceiver, mistreater, uh, all that fun stuff. That's me right now, okay? And I'm just being honest with you because, you know, we, we've built such a strong relationship. And I said I wasn't going to buy the R5, and I feel like I lied to you. So I'm here to make a video to say I'm sorry. Technically, technically though, I did not lie to you. Kind of, but not. And let me explain. So what I want to do now is actually a body comparison against the R. So they have very, very similar bodies, all right? So we're gonna start at the front. In the front, they're almost identical, like completely identical. And you also find that in these sensors, we have that door that we all love, and we wonder why other companies don't incorporate that sensor, you know, cover. They both have it, so that's a great thing. Another thing they share, of course, is the RF mount. What I wanna do now is turn them to the top, where we will see some differences for sure. First difference on the top, you'll see going from left to right, my left to my all right okay the on off switch is more tactile on the r6 all right you actually feel it there's a grip there's a little lever here the major difference you will see from the r6 and the regular r is going to be here so you have the mode dial here and of course here you have the display showing your mode showing your settings showing your you know your different things your attributes your f-stop your shutter speed those type of things you will see here if you look really closely you will see the custom buttons all right let me let me let talk let's talk about the custom buttons really quickly the custom buttons with the R is very programmable all right you can use it for photo and video the custom buttons and I found this out last night on the R6 you can only customize it with photo you cannot customize at all with video and I hope that they figure this out in the firmware update it, it can be figured out through firmware I hope they do it but I think it is silly that you would not incorporate that custom video settings on the R6 because now it really does look like a photography camera instead of a photography video camera it's supposed to be a hybrid camera why can't I do both on here since we're already here we might as well go to the back I would say the back of this camera saw a lot of changes, okay? Changes that were necessary, changes that we love, and it's like, oh, y'all listening. Y'all listening to us complain about this little touch bar over here that's on the R. This made no sense. Every content creator known to man hated this touch bar, okay? Fortunately, with the R5 and the R6, they have brought back our our joystick. I mean, come on, y'all brought back, y'all, you should have done this in the first place. There, Every camera on the market has a joystick. Why would you think it's a great idea to take the joystick away like that? Did, did, you think come on do you know do you think do you it's like you don't shoot photos or something in your life that's how it felt lastly okay we now have our wheel we have our wheel back okay we have it back and we've asked for it, we begged for it, and they brought it back thank goodness now as we turn these things on the side you're gonna realize something that people complain about the most when it came to the regular R the regular R only had one car slot and people lost their minds. The blogs lost their minds just telling them, oh my God, it's only car slot, so I can't use this. Yes, you can. Think about this, when I used the 5D3, there was the SD car slot and there was also the CF car slot. None of us really wanted to use that CF car slot, so why are we complaining about, oh, it doesn't have two car slots, okay? I mean, people that were complaining about the two car slots, they weren't even people that actually, you know, I hate to say it, shot weddings. They were just in the comments complaining and they didn't use the camera. I used the camera. I've shot with this camera at a wedding, okay? There's only one negative I hated about shooting with this camera in a wedding is that the frame rates were too slow for, for photos. Like at five frames, six frames, ridiculously slow. I can't do much with that, okay? Which is another big reason I got the R6. What you'll notice with the R6 is two card slots, okay? What you've been wanting, all right? You got what you asked for. They put the two card slots, which I do agree with you they should have put it in the regular R they should have but they didn't and we made do we made it work all right but now we got the two card slots cool last but certainly not least these side here okay what you'll notice okay we got some good things happening here and we got some bad things happening on the regular R the mic jack is right here okay what sucks about that is when you put that microphone here that also messes up the angle of the screen so if you see this 
you see that the screen is here and I want to turn the screen. If I have a microphone in, I can't fully turn my screen because the mic jack is right there with the microphone inside of it. So from an ergonomical design perspective, all right, that's a big miss, okay? So you can't use a mic and get the full flip out. You gotta turn it this way and then flip it and then come back. And even then, if you're vlogging, that mic jack gets in the way of the screen. Now, with the R6, let's go through some of the differences and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the good and the bad, okay? So the mic jack is up here. I'm gonna show you something that's really good, really fortunate that they really thought about and I'm very happy. So now, when I turn it, you see it completely misses the mic jack now. And what's cool is now it's not protruding all in front of the screen anymore, okay? So that is a great ergonomic design. That is a great redesign on their part. They really thought that out. I'm not gonna take what they didn't think out, okay? Let, let's talk about it, okay? So the Sony a7S III, what does it have, all right? It has a full-size HDMI port. Do you know why? It's because more and more now, we are recording to external monitors. We're using the Atomos Ninja 5, okay? So. In the regular R, you got the, I guess it's called the mini HDMI, and we were like, you know what, we'll make it work. Canon did something ridiculous. They had the audacity to put a micro HDMI port on this camera. The mini HDMI was already bad enough, but it was bigger than the micro HDMI. We're gonna put it through its paces. We're gonna do a full test. We're gonna make sure that we can get the most out of this camera. And I'm gonna put this R6 through various scenarios showing you what it can do and what it is really capable of. So stick around, keep watching the show. This is an episode. You might as well call it an episode. Keep watching the show. And you know, we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna see what this thing can do. So what's up, y'all? All right, right now I'm vlogging on the R6. I have the image stabilization on. We're shooting in 4K, 422. I'm not using C-Log yet. I'm gonna use that when we have a better lighting situation, but uh, this is Tanya right here. You've seen Tanya on the channel before, all right? She's gonna be doing a fitness sequence. We're at Quantum Fit Life today, and I really wanted to kind of put this R6 through the paces. So I'm gonna show you the setup. What we're using here is a nice soft box. We have the Godox VL150. It is also a great option if you you need a wireless option so if I come around here you'll see the setup here and you see the v-mount battery but I'm gonna shoot this entire fitness sequence as Tanya is over here stretching I'm gonna shoot the entire sequence handheld no gimbals throughout this entire video no gimbals okay the other thing I'm gonna be using are gonna be these here tube lights all right we're gonna set the mood with that cool thing about these is that you can actually change the color so we're gonna use these two we're gonna turn these lights off you're gonna get a, a various amount of things we're gonna be doing, taking this thing through its paces, but I hope you enjoy the next sequence. Let's go. cool so i hope you love that sequence okay from this 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 thing here this thing is very powerful telling you hasn't overheated i know you're wondering has it overheated we shot that in 4k 60 4k 24 and also the of course 120p and 1080p so it didn't overheat everything's good so we're gonna do something else i'm gonna just keep shooting with this thing over the next couple weeks and we're gonna see what it does but again it did not overheat in 4k 60 and the majority of those shots were in 4k 60 so there you go um, okay, so what we're gonna do right now, if you look over here, I have the Godox VL150, 
and that is going to be the main light we use that is actually being powered by a V-mount battery. I'm gonna also use this here. This is, you know, a tube light. I'm gonna put it over here and we're gonna have it actually as a, like a police light. But as I change the color, as you can see, boom. So we're gonna change it to a police light. So uh, I'm changing this to pretty much police light. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna set up this scene perfectly, but we have this light here. We're gonna have this as an accent. We're in a really grungy garage because we really wanted to set the mood. So you're gonna see what we're gonna do, you know. You, you know, I hope you enjoy this scene. I'm gonna reenact a, a guy as you see him in, you know, in some battle gear, ready for war. So let's get it. We're gonna see what we can do, all right? Cool. So, it seems you want to take down the bat. Well, I've already broken the bat. I understand how he ticks. I understand that this city motivates him. But why? Why should I work for you? I don't need you. But if I do work for you, does that give you power over me? No, of course it does not. But I will work for you. Only if I'm paid comfortably, and this operation is mine going forward. So your men are my men. You listen to me. And now we can work together to break the bat. So, let's begin. What's up, y'all? We're back. All right, we're taking this Canon R6 through its paces. Right now, we're shooting in C-Log at that 10-bit 422 color sign so we can get a good color grade. But what I want to do is several things on this roof. Number one, I want to do an IBIS test. We're going to do a handheld IBIS test with me walking, with Tanya walking. Tanya's on the camera right now. Shout out to Tanya. I appreciate you as always. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to do this walkthrough with the color grading as far as C-Log. I've also done something crazy. All right, I've brought my cinema camera with me. I brought the Zcam S6 with me, the E2S6. And I wanna see if the C-Log in this R6 compares to the Z-Log in this cinema camera because this has more dynamic range. So I wanna see a comparison of those two. You can tell me which one you like better. On top of that, I wanna do that IBIS test. Lastly, I wanna do an autofocus test. We're gonna do the autofocus. I have the Ninja 5 with me so we can kinda see what the camera's doing and tracking and doing the autofocus. So I'm just trying to take it through its paces. So yes, we got an autofocus test, we got an IBIS test, and we have a C-Log dynamic range test. So let's get started. So those were the image stabilization shots. Still trying to get used to how it works and what are the, the quirks to make it work the best. But those were shots with image stabilization on, with it off, but also the image stabilization paired with the digital IS, okay? Not the enhanced, the enhanced can get really warpy. So you let me know what you think. What I think, I think it's a very useful tool. Like as far as walking, you're not supposed to be using IBIS while walking anyway, but I just wanted to kind of test it regardless. But if you're doing walking shots, you should, use a gimbal. I mean, you, you just have to, all right? It's just the right thing to do. But for what it's worth, the IBIS is actually very impressive to me and I will absolutely be using it. So of course you see what it looks like in C-Log. So next I'm going to compare the C-Log with the Canon R6 with the Z-Log paired with the Z-Cam E2S6. So we're gonna try to get very similar shots. We're gonna do a comparison between the color grades, the color science, what they look like, and also dynamic range. So let's see what it can do.
All right, so right now we're on the 85 millimeter Sigma. So you should see crazy bokeh right now. But I, what, I, what I really wanted to do is test this out, the autofocus, okay? So I'm gonna look away, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna look here, is it tracking my eyes? My thing is, is I wanna make sure that even in a slight situation where I'm using something like a 70 to 200, 85 millimeter, how good is the autofocus? Is it if I come in forward, if I go back, you know, how good is it? If I turn my back around, does it lose me? If I bring it back here, does it still find me? Who knows? I don't know. It's just a game of picky boo with my camera. So we're going to give a little test. I want to do that with the Atomos Ninja 5 attached so you can see what the autofocus is doing. So let's give that a try. What's up y'all, Mario Devon back. We are going to talk about the Canon R6. The overall summary of what I feel about this camera. Is it capable? Is it that thing? Is that the thing you should be spending your money on? I'm gonna say yes. Over the R5, this is a better buy. The only thing you're missing from the R5 is the 4K 120 and I'm the 45 megapixels. I'm not counting the 8K because who's gonna use that 8K? It's not even the most editable thing. But I'm letting you know right now that the Canon R6 is the best mirrorless camera I've ever used. This is coming from a person that uses the Sony a7 III, the original Canon R, also have an M6, and I've used several other Sony cameras, and I'm telling you, it is the best mirrorless camera I've ever used. We're talking from a video perspective, I'm gonna have an entire another video talking about the photography perspective of it, and it's a beast in that too. The autofocus is amazing. The autofocus does its job, doesn't matter if I'm doing video as far as like full frame slow-mo, doesn't matter if I'm doing the 4K, it's doing its thing, if I'm doing the 120, it's got really good autofocus. I never had to worry about making sure I got the shot. All I needed to worry about was framing the shot and the autofocus lived its life. It did what it was supposed to do. It did what it was paid to do and it was earning its paycheck. Obviously the color science is on point, okay? So some people don't like the color science because it's a little bit warm, but I'm realizing that that warmth is actually a, a green tint. And that green tint is very reminiscent of something like this, a cinema camera, okay? I love that look. That way I can get this thing closer to a cinema camera. Right now I'm actually using the R6 yet again on this B camera and it's matching really well with the Z cam, which is again, a cinema camera. I feel like I can get it to match. I'm shooting with both of these cameras right now in a format and I'm you know I'm able to color grade them closely so that they can match in a YouTube video or any other video but I love the C log coming out of the Canon R6 I'm letting you know that I was, I was just pushing it I was doing whatever I wanted to with the color grade with the highlights with the with the shadows I was doing whatever I wanted to but I was also able to go in and change the colors of just certain things and that's what 10-bit color would do for you so I'm letting you know the 10-bit color it is worth it it is it is very very high quality now the footage is not going to to be as flat as something like a cinema camera but it is flat enough and flexible enough that you can edit and really make it look however you want to look in that color grade good thing is if you don't want to use c-log that is fine that's cool that's great it doesn't really matter okay and the reason why is because the image straight out of the camera also looks amazing and i love that because if i just want to get a quick clip quick talk or anything like that and stuff boom i'm good i can just pull that right out of the camera and just do my thing turn it on flip the switch bow boom done okay as far as ibis i've been using the ibis uh, i've used it on a music video i've used it in fitness video i've been, i've shot a lot of handheld with this camera lately especially with the fitness side but a, a lot of things i've done i've done tests and you saw those tests in this video when i was vlogging and you know going through all the things about this camera the ibis is very useful okay it's useful in fitness situations the ibis is a big reason why i wanted to try this camera so yeah i, I think it's very useful it can get wobbly of course at the wide end but i don't do a lot of stuff in the wide end and if i'm vlogging it that really is not the biggest issue for me because you know vlogs are going to be a little bit shaky but i'm letting you know the ibis still works even at the wide end at 16 i use a 17 to 35 it still works pretty well the 4k is super sharp 
The 1080p is super sharp. The 1080p in this camera, it looks like it's sharper than the 4K in the original R, and it's absolutely sharper than the Sony a7 III. And I really, 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 really love the 1080p 120 frames per second, okay? The 120 frames per second is back, maybe, okay? It's doing its thing. I've been using this camera for over a month. This camera has been the exclusive mirrorless camera I've used, all right? I use the cinema camera, obviously, but as far as like my main camera, on the go, if I'm not using a cinema camera, mm-hmm, it has been the Canon R6 for over a month, and that is in every shoot I've done. Now, the elephant in the room, did it overheat. Right now, the Canon R6 over here is running 4K, 24 frames per second. We're doing it, and I'm just letting it record. Of course, it has that 30 minute record limit, but so far in me filming this part of the video, it has not overheated. I've taken it on jobs, it has not overheated. You've seen the footage from the video, this video right here, either one of those times didn't overheat all right these are full shoots these are these are this is what i would do for clients be an hour shoot two hour shoot three hour shoot now do i really want to rely on it for you know the entire day as far as like a six hour shoot have not tried it yet i'm very sure to overheat then but for me as of now the camera has not overheated i haven't even gotten an overheating warning yet let me know in the comments below if you love this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you want to comment, leave a comment. Talk to your boy. Subscribe to your boy, okay? Support the channel, all right? Show me some love and I'll show you love back. I'm going to try my best to get to every comment. I do appreciate your comments and I want to make sure I show love to you all. But let me know what you think about the Canon R6. Personally, I love it. I'm not going to sell it or send it back. I'm going to keep it. It is going to be my main mirrorless camera. That's you know, a really, really good match to this here cinema camera that I love to use too. So thank you so much for watching the video. I will see you on the next one. Peace out.